I'm about to show you how to destroy your passion for art. What? But he's an art teacher. Obviously, the things we'll discuss today are things to avoid if you don't want this to happen. We're going to look at five mistakes that a lot of my students make, and I think it's important to talk about them because I see them all the time in the comments. A lot of you guys talking about how you lost your passion for art. <laughs> Having a passion in life is a privilege. The majority of people never find theirs. Just ask your friends. You'll see. They might have hobbies, of course, but hobbies are not passions. It's not nearly at the same level. So if you happen to be one of the lucky ones and have found yours, here's a few things to avoid to not kill it forever. The first way to kill your passion is to have unreasonable goals. What's unreasonable? Well, something I see often are art students or just artists in general placing a set time limit for themselves to reach a certain level. You know, like I'll need to be this good to get a job by the time I'm out of school in one or two years or like I need to get to pro level by next year or my parents will make me quit art. You know, like it's just a recurring things with my students. In either case, the stress that comes along for the ride in those instances, especially since you'll almost never reach your goal in the given time frame, is pure poison for your passion. The result is always going to be the same. You expect and maybe others expect you, you know, to be good enough or to deliver certain results by a certain point, And it just doesn't happen. Sorry, bro. The impact on your motivation and your passion for something when you fail to reach a goal you set for yourself is massive. It's actually traumatic for most. So how do you make sure you always reach your art goals? Well, maybe it sounds simple, but clearly it isn't. And it's just to aim for smaller goals, more realistic goals. With art, the destination is fun, of course, but you'll never get there unless you first get to enjoy the process. You gotta enjoy the small wins, the small improvements. Just as an example, but maybe aim to reach like 10 likes on social media for new posts, you know, if you're just starting or get a positive comment. And then once you reach that or reach something else, you know, let's set another goal for yourself, maybe to hit 10 likes, a thousand likes. Not that likes are important, but just as an example, it could be any goal. Maybe to draw a face in half the time it currently takes you while maintaining, you know, the same level of quality. What's important to know is that the brain doesn't really care if it's a big or a small goal. Your internal reward system activates whether you reach a big or a small goal. So having too big of a goal, taking a lot of time tackling it, and then eventually failing is a sure way to kill your passion, especially if this keeps happening. Easier goals, you get to hit much faster, and then you feel good more often, and so you just keep doing it. And that's the way. Now, the next thing you can do to kill your passion for art is to study too much. This happens way too often from what I've seen. If you're trying to improve quickly, it can seem like the obvious thing to do, like more practice, more art games, right? Well, art is just like working out, you know? So what happens if you hit the gym every day for like hours and never get a break? Well, your body's not going to handle that. We always need time to recover. I speak from experience. One thing I repeat to my students all the time is to find the fun in art and always prioritize that. Doing pure studies is not something that I've ever done personally. It doesn't sound fun to me at all. So I always try to find an angle to make it more fun. It might start as a simple anatomy study, but then I'll often turn that into a cool character, you know, that takes on a life of its own. The art goal is not only the XP points you get from practicing that skill, it's also the artwork that will come out of it. I get two things instead of one. So I learn something, but I also express myself as an artist. That's way more fun. It's not quite that, but it's like gamifying my study process. If you're working on a bunch of gesture drawing studies, for example, maybe take the best ones of the lot and turn them into something more. Treat them as the foundation for your next drawing. Leaving the door open for those studies to turn into something more is a nice brain hack to make sure that your studies don't turn into a chore because nobody likes doing chores. So a great way to kill your passion is just to study for hours day after day. Instead, break up your study sessions as much as possible as in, you know, limit them to like 15 to 30 minutes max, which has been scientifically proven to be the best amount of time to maximize the retention of any information. And then, you know, just sprinkle in some personal art, some drawings from imagination in the mix, and then always make sure that you're excited about what you're working on. If you don't, it will, your passion is already dying. Oh. On the topic of studies, the next point has to do with studying the wrong way. What? As long as you study, you should be all set, right? No. The difference between someone who studies the right way, as in following a structured education, versus someone without much structure to their studies, well, their difference will be night and day. You know, just like writing a book. 
there are some things to learn first, like how to write letters and then how to write words and then make simple sentences, more vocabulary, better grammar, good storytelling skills, etc. etc. There is a progression there that might be maybe more obvious for writing, but the same idea applies to art as well. First, hand dexterity, knowing your tools, learning core fundamentals like construction, gesture, anatomy, perspective, and going from simple notions to more complicated. And by the way, I put a full guide showing all the skills that you should aim to focus on and in what order recently right here on YouTube for free. So check it out with the link in the video description after this. It's been pretty popular. Anyways, studying the right way can mean massive progress in just a year's time. I see it really, really often with my students. Meanwhile, bad study can mean years wasted going essentially nowhere. That's another great way to kill your passion. The thing with studying is that everybody can do it and do it right. If you've ever felt like you're not making much progress despite a lot of hard work, it's very likely because your approach is wrong. You're studying the wrong way and spinning your wheels. The method is everything. Find a teacher, find a good program and learn art the right way instead. If it hasn't worked for you so far, it's just because you haven't found the right thing yet. Now, if art for you is just a simple hobby, and really, who cares about all of this? Do whatever is fun for you, right? But if art is your passion and you want results, you know, you you crave getting better, how you study is going to be a game changer. And I have a ton of stuff available for free right here on the channel. But if you want a university level education with an awesome Discord community to level up with, well, you know what's coming, but check out my best-selling art program with the link in the video description. We just reached 21,000 enrolled students, and so I'm extending last month's sale, but dropping the discount just a bit. I'll continue to reduce the discount each month going forward, so make sure you get it early rather than later to save on the total. You get lifetime access and free access to all future updates and additions anyways. All right, the next point is very broad, but it's very powerful. Another sure way to kill your passion is to let your brain associate negative things to art. Let your brain do what? Let me give you an example. Say you're drawing or painting at your desk and you're getting frustrated. What you're doing isn't going well for whatever reason. You just slam on your desk, stand up, you're bummed out, and you walk out of the office to go do something else that you feel is going to be more fun, make you feel better. Well, right there and then, You've just done something terrible without realizing. Because you see, subconsciously, you just associated a little bit of negativity where you do art. It might seem like a little silly thing at first, but it can get seriously dangerous if that becomes too frequent. You'll very quickly grow to associate your office and your art with the bad feelings that you have whenever you leave it. Where leaving it will almost become like a positive thing, like getting out far away from that frustration you get while working on your art. The brain does it on its own, you can't really control it. And it's another very potent poison for your passion. This can happen in many different situations. You know, like if you argue with your parents about wanting to become an artist all the time, well, you might eventually drop it in favor of just keeping a good relationship. Or maybe like if browsing another artist's Instagram page gets you bummed out every time because of the like envy you feel, you know, like the gap in skills is just too real. That's negative. So stop doing it. All of these different things just pile up and eventually the negativity will be just overwhelming. You know, your passion will just die. Instead, there's a super easy fix to so make sure that this never happens to you. Just do the complete opposite. So if you're getting frustrated at your desk, before you stand up and leave, work on something else real quick, you know, like something that's way easier for you. Even trace something, you know, if that helps in that specific case, just do what you got to do so that when you do stand up and leave your office, it'll be after doing something that you're happy with. And that's the feeling that you'll get to associate with it. You stopped while you were having a good time. And that right there is a game changer. So be extra mindful about your state of mind when dealing with a passion like art. Avoid negative associations that will kill your passion slowly but surely. But the opposite is also true. All right, finally, another great way to kill your passion would be to not practice the most important art skill there is, one most artists never even think about, observation. I've brought up observation many times before, and as artists, the only reason we can draw anything is because we can look at it. The visual information comes in through your eyes, and the brain lets you know what it is. We don't just see, though, we also automatically analyze what we see, right? Sometimes a lot, sometimes not. Imagine you look at something for the first time, you know, like a game of football, or maybe like a streamer playing Fortnite or League of Legends, or maybe just even looking at a, like an engine. Chances are you won't understand much of what you see, and as a result, what you can observe will be somewhat limited. If you knew the rules of those games, though, maybe you could actually be entertained. You could even admire the form of the players, you know, like, or their strategies. See the difference? It's the same thing with the engine. If you're into mechanical engineering, you might actually know right away what the engine is for. Maybe 
approximately how much power it can handle, and a bunch of other technical characteristics that someone with no such knowledge would ever even spot. Two different people looking at the same thing, but able to retain vastly different quantities of information. So observation is what allows us to assimilate information, information that we can then reuse in our art. If you don't know the structure of a face, looking at a person's face won't necessarily be you know, particularly insightful for you. But if you've studied the head construction, you know, the anatomy of a face and how lights and shadows work, maybe you'll be able to gather a lot more information by looking at the exact same face. The first person who doesn't know anything about anatomy won't get much, but the more educated person will be able to extract far more information and therefore progress faster. And what is that if it's not fuel for passion? And that's going to be it for today's class. And since you've been a good student, you can go ahead and download one of my main brush sets that I use daily for free with the link in the video description. Use them responsibly, they're powerful. Also a special announcement, but make sure you got your notifications enabled to be on time for the next class. I'm starting work on my second artist study videos. The last one did pretty great, so I'm encouraged to keep going, but these videos take a lot more work than normal because of all the research that goes into it. So it should be coming out in about two weeks or so, but I'll still be posting shorts and maybe a few art school live stream recordings in the meantime. All right, peace.